All right, so here are the cells that we need in order to build this seven series Stanley Meyer inspired circuit. I have to say, after getting these pipes cut with a carbide blade, it's probably a good idea to Dremel the edges just so you can get rid of that odd crust that forms after the metal. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and do that right now. Now I have a seven cell series configuration. I can turn this guy over and I'll show you how it works. So the idea is pretty basic here. We've got two wires input and the yellow is the positive. Now you can kind of see how the yellow just goes down in there. It sleeves all the way down in the middle tube and it actually reaches the center positive. Now this configuration is really important because what's happening after the center positive is it's having to go to that outer bit of metal and that's the end, that's the edge of the capacitor and what happens is after it reaches the center positive it has to go to the outer tube on the larger surface area for the hydrogen to generate then going back in to the other center positive of the other tube and the cycle just repeats it comes back back to the outer casing of the ground and then back to the center positive and it repeats until it finally gets to the end which is this ground wire and if we loop that around it comes out here so that is really basically it i'm going to go ahead and lift it up and we are going to install it to this cell right here and also my previous hoh experiment with snow that has melted in this tube is working pretty well and it's definitely slowly but surely because i want this cell to condition of course more importantly i want to use a larger configuration and have it condition way faster than just using one cell so bunny and i here are going to get the cell to be just a little bit thinner on the edge of this cardboard and I'm worried that's gonna put conductivity in the water but not to fear because I made sure to hot glue the bottom of this like crazy and it's basically a web of hot glue so as this paper kind of degrades there'll be kind of this web or foundation yeah guys it is just continuing to snow non-stop out there and before the power dies out let's go ahead and test this cell and we'll see how it does in case you guys are wondering this is complete distilled water I, I wish i showed pouring that in but i promise you guys it is distilled water and let's go ahead and see what happens so i'll just go ahead and rev the ferrari here oh my Gosh, that is extremely volatile. And let's hook it up and see. All right, so we got the scope on and we are probing between the cell. And please be on 10X, thank you. All right. All right, now let's go ahead and we will see how much we get with seven series connected cells using distilled water. Now I still hear a buzz, so it doesn't sound like it's actually utilizing a load or a capacitor. So I might have to check my connections. Oh no, wait a minute guys, that is the voltage. Oh my word, that is probably the highest voltage I have. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we should start to see something soon because there is, in fact, an enormous voltage. I have never in my life seen that many volts. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, six and a half times ten, uh, times, okay, so six and a half times five times ten. Anybody can do that in their heads super fast. Okay, so to the cell, 325 volts off of a 12 volt input and there's really not a whole lot kicking off just yet so we'll probably have to just kind of wait and see and i will update in probably a minute or so all right so update it has been probably at least three minutes with this circuit running on this cell and i have to say it doesn't look like anything's happening and i'm not saying that from a discouraging point of view this is distilled water what can i say about the voltage i've got 12 volts in and with the resonance on the lc circuit between two spark gaps and the two mots in series i have nothing coming out of that with distilled water very very high voltage though so it 
might be because I've never conditioned the cell before and maybe I just have to try something differently in the meantime. Now just out of curiosity because nothing's really happening with distilled water, I'm gonna go ahead and give some urine a try for it and I just want to see what happens in terms of the frequency. In fact I know the voltage will drop, I know the frequency will decrease but ultimately I just want to see if that makes a difference in the cell in any way oh wow okay something immediately started happening I don't know if you guys can see that but there is whoa I added a very very tiny amount of urine to this and I actually got some hydrogen I mean that's interesting so none of the other cells are really doing much it's really just conducting between those two right there and you can kind of see how it's gone around right there I think that's just because it's not mixed very well on the cell and I don't know if you guys can see that but yeah my voltage has dropped in intensely I mean by a serious amount but the amount of hydrogen that's coming off after adding how should I say this P to the water um, <laughs> P is apparently a great electrolyte uh, and I am drawing a pretty insane amount of power from that but we'll know when we get there now just out of curiosity I'd kind of like to add more and see what happens Wow yeah that definitely has like the results between those cells and just a quick update on what the urine did with the circuit I actually might have burnt out the diode sitting right there on one of the ends of the secondaries on the MOTS and that may probably just be because there is way way less impedance and and what you can kind of see as a result is that it's really just gone between these two cells right here with the wires it didn't actually go all the way around like it was supposed to so I think I'm I'm gonna have to fill it up with just distilled water or tap water and stop using any sort of conductivity. In fact, I might get the old impedance matching circuit out on this cell in the future just to see what I can get to happen. So I'm gonna get the cell washed out really quickly and we will come back when that is ready. All right, now here's an update for you. So I actually decided that I would just kind of scrap this right here. I'm not using this right now. I got rid of the microwave trans transformer setup and I'm using my old impedance matching circuit. All I'm doing is I'm stepping up the voltage 24 volts in and I'm stepping it up to 80 volts, throwing it into my impedance matching circuit. And before I show you the hydrogen generation, I just want to show you the power. So it's 18.4 watts. And let me turn the circuit off. You guys heard the click. Okay, so it's roughly 9.6 at idle, as I've showed in one of my other videos. Go ahead and turn it on again. So we're taking about 8 to 9 watts. Now, this is the generation. And this is of the new cell. This is my old impedance matching circuit. And it seems to just get the frequency perfectly. And... I don't have to do any excess tinkering with it. My voltage is significantly lower, but the frequency has gone from 1,000 to 3,000 hertz, so it seems like this cell, for whatever reason, likes 3,000 hertz, and it would be good to keep it that way. I'm just kind of bummed out that, well, for one, not all of those cells are going, maybe at the moment or momentarily, and that this high voltage setup is just not that great and one of the reasons is because iron cores with using conduction on high frequencies are not good they will dilute high frequencies when you use iron cores um, one reason why you should probably stick with a ferrite core i have some flyback transformer cores somewhere that are hiding um, but that's not really the goal these are just probably not a good idea for using on tap water or maybe just maybe it's just distilled water for the matter I'm really not sure I'll try I'll give them a try some other time but for right now I really just have to say I'm happy with this production at six watts of input and I'm gonna give it some time to condition around all of the cells and hopefully maybe all of them will start to generate and I know that doesn't look like a lot right now but this cell has never ran before so it's a pretty neat unique result I'll have to just kind of tinker around a bit with this setup and see what I can get going all right guys now I definitely have an update now look at that that has got to be 
at least 350 volts. Now I'm back with distilled water. I actually fixed my circuit. The problem was that I had some of these diodes that burnt out and I didn't know they were burnt out until I replaced them. But here's the result. So we've got, you know, better than last time. I've got some bubbles and I just powered it on with this configuration. I'm really liking the voltage. This is, again, a 12 volt input and it has just magically turned into 200 volts. I know there's no magic with that, but that's just what resonance does. We're at 26 watts and if I power this circuit off, it'll go to around 10 watts with the supply on the bottom in the orange. The blue one takes about nine watts at idle. Uh, now I do want to figure out the calculations as far as my amp draw on this. If you kind of look at that, it's it's really not bad. I would say it's it's getting to the point where it's it's ready to start conditioning. And this is with distilled water. I only get these very, very high voltage spikes with distilled water. And you kind of have to like wait two seconds uh, or maybe even a few seconds before you actually see results. It's not, it's not awful. It's definitely better than before. Um, this is almost taking what it would take at idle with the circuit running. When I actually take these leads off of the cell, there isn't any failure whatsoever. It, it'll just keep buzzing and running. Um, so it's a completely detachable capacitor with this water cell here. That's what's really good about it is you can just detach the leads and it'll still running. It'll still run. It's pretty much bulletproof in the end. 